What's up guys welcome back let's talk about the buffed again mage tower now we have inquisitor varus here has 75,000 more health than he did and um it doesn't look like they increased the scaling we're getting from gear or increased the gear level on our side or anything like that for the player's advantage perhaps they just thought they're gonna crush it when they get the hero talent so still doable we have a, a completion here with dragonflight gear and all the best consumables bears you're gonna notice that the Puddle under Varus is much smaller than it used to be. So we're just going to pause real quick. A little Mage Tower lore. The bosses here used to not automatically pull. When you see me pulling for myself, this is because I've used a potion of Frozen Fatality. You can also use an Invis Pop that puts your potion on cooldown. Either way, Druids would open the fight with their Stealth Rake, which stunned Varus and would also prevent his Puddle from spawning. A lot of early bear kills were with that method specifically obviously it makes varus quite the joke at the end of the day though it doesn't have too too much of an influence on how fast you kill cruel unless you're getting a third or fourth infernal and even waiting for incarn to come back up we didn't get the third infernal what bears also used to do they had the i think it was a lufa wraps which was bracers and maybe one other lego which would increase the radius of thrash maybe the stat count whatever and so bears used to sit out the puddle and just do that, right? Thrash was like so much of their damage. You would just pretty much lose out on most of your single target damage, but it was just a way to do the fight with fewer moving parts. So you can do that now. You could actually do it in the last iteration as well, last week, three weeks before that. But now that Astral Influence, the five yard extended range, doesn't impact melee ability. I'm pretty sure that's not impacting Thrash, but this puddle here is small enough for you to be able to do Fresh refreshes. Speaking of which, I've changed a couple of talents. We'll talk about those after. The fight is mostly just longer. And obviously with Cruel, that is awful. And with Varus, that's, again, pure killing time at the end of Varus. So we, we bust him up. One thing, I got real aggressive or... Uh, I was about to back out, but I didn't. And we just kind of stay in here a little bit too long. This is totally fine. This is why we have the fire rack trinket. You can see even before I pop the trinket, though, I have this big absorb shield on me from all these malls. Again, we'll review talents a little bit later. And I'm like, okay, we got to get out of here. I'm going to go down to one health. I kick that. We, I think we knock. Anyway, we got a bunch of damage, 35%. Like, this is like the boomy challenge. Um, eyes felt like they needed to be double tapped in dragonflight gear that i very often i had an eye at like 10 percent health and just kind of chilling so just hit them with two and that'll be enough to actually kill them and nothing worse than refreshing or hitting them with the second one for like two hours just do the double tap infernals you may see me do this before but i'm pretty sure i cyclone this guy I thought to myself, let's bring him in a little bit more. But Cyclone stops the AoE damage from the Infernals. Honestly, I really like doing that. I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world, but, you know, damage is damage. Oof, we bark skin. And there's a talent called Matted Fur, which when you bark skin in Survival Instincts, it gives you a really big absorb shield. And it's actually like, I don't know, it could be like 5k right now. It's a good bit. It's certainly enough to survive. Uh, a mind run, and here's our, right? I threw down the Ursals. They walk through it, and I just don't let them. That's the longest I've ever tanked. They only got five hits on. And this is where I'm looking at my Incarn with like a minute 20 left, and I'm like, oh, God. And if you can be bothered to line up, you know, when you go in for Varus to be able to, like, kick him and not have to, like, run out and then kick him or use a, a knock or you know, in cap roar or something like that. I mostly get lucky when I do it correctly and end up having to deal with the mind run. Other classes, it's not too bad. I always want to have paralyze. I, I press my paralyze button from the monk because that's the ultimate F you for Varus. It's like, oh, okay, you thought I was done. And we double orb there because it just spawned on me, which is kind of lame. And we got to drag the ads away from Ver or away from the friendly NPCs because that channel will, will kill everybody, including you. And we get knocked back quite a bit. I don't double tap that one, but uh, I feel like I'm hoping it cleaves off. Oh, yeah, it's going to kill. Sometimes you just get a couple of good crits, and it'll just die anyway. Or if you have, like, a proc, right? Or if the Moonfire proc procs another Moonfire, then...
in Capror right as they start that channel. We'll make sure that they don't recast it, and you don't even need to be, need to be in the puddle for Varus for that to interrupt him. All right, here's the deal. We got Cruel. We're right on top of him. Both our Infernals are right on top of us, so we're just going to start backing away, and I'm usually on the other side. doesn't really matter. About 10 seconds into it, he's going to jump, annihilate, and then Twisted Reflections, which is the cast that we need to interrupt. I'm going to start backing away from the Infernals. Them knocking me back specifically is like the part of the fight that really gets me, so I'm just always trying to create distance. It can be a doozy. Let's check it out. So Cruel comes down, and again, he's going to jump on us, create the puddle, annihilate Twisted Reflections. And at that point, we're just going to wait for the ads to come up and just keep our thrash stacks up. Just stay glued to them and just do as much single target as you can. It sounds weird, but like if you're not spamming Maul, right, you generally won't need Iron Furs until your two or three stacks of Annihilate. It does increase every all the damage he does. but um. I mean, you really can't be waiting. You, we had, we used drums. Part of the wild, I actually used it this time. I had everything up, and he's still got 80k health. I'm like, oh, we're so boned. I've used my second survival instincts on that one, and I'm like, okay, well, I have my fire act trinket, and Barkskin's coming up. I kind of used Barkskin like a doofus here, but uh, we got two orbs over there. That's going to set us up very nice. Nice charge back, mess these ads up, just get dots, just get dots. We have in-cap roar coming right up. We hit it. I say we hit it. And I'm like, okay, we are going to orb this. Yep. And then 18k health, we're just going to go for it. We can't survive. We already popped our trinket. It's not going to be on another orb. Smashy, smashy. So if I didn't double tap survival instincts, it would have been a lot better. I wouldn't have had to worry about it too much. It smacks you up pretty hard. Here's the gear. It's a fused helmet, no scam gems. We got the uh, major agility, eternal agility on the boots, fire act trinket, and an alchemist stone, and my Rashon weapon. And just a quick look at the little more OP set that we can build. We're still still working on it, not as much as we were. Before we get into that, I want to point out these two things. This Straddling Viridium, which is a Battle for Azeroth speed gem, actually translates into 10% movement speed in the tower. This was super cool. I would highly recommend. And then we also have the Straddling Sage Agat, Agate, whatever, whatever you say there. And that's another 5% movement speed. Hard to say, but at least take the 10%. Like, that's super cool. But I'm just going to talk about real quick where the gear is from and what gems and enchants we're doing. Ravenheart Headdress is Akanai Crypt's second boss, which you can jump off the side so you can get your instance reset a little bit faster. Leviathan's Eye, Kraken's Eye, Saber's Eye of Agility. Nice to have them all in one helmet. The Incandescent Essence Enchant from Dragonflight. If you haven't put it on, I probably did nothing. Actually did nothing. Fantastic. Uh, neck piece, just get a 319 pendant of impending perils. And I would really try to focus on when you can bother to do it, get the haste versus items. Haste is your best stat versus the most DR you can get from a stat. Strongly recommend. And when you're looking at items from Burning Crusade, a lot of them seem like they have way more stat budget, but it's mostly because in Burning Crusade, stamina was part of the stat budget. So you can have items with varying amounts of stamina, and then you're going to see inflated agi and stuff like that on items that still have large number of sockets. So that's where you're getting the difference in that the Mr. Pandaria socketed gear still takes away primary stats, as this does, but it doesn't have a balancer in that there's no low stamina items. Wrath of the Lich King also has some socketed items that follow this similar dynamic. Not all of them. This is just a Gruul's Lair restoration to your shoulder. A Dreadfire Drape, Ryolith in the Firelands. Again, the plus three socket bonus. Still by far the most agi I've been able to get on a cloak. So again, the enchant for your cloak is Minor Power. That's plus eight primary stat. We love it. Uh, Midnight Chest Guard, this from Archimond. And again, lower stamina than items of its similar item level and inflated secondary stat budget because of it. I think it also has higher agi than other items of its kind. And again, soccer bonus attack power, three soccer. The primary stat enchant is eternal stats on that. 
chess piece. Wrath of the Lich King has lots of socket bonus, single socket leather bracers. There's also a double socketed one. Last boss, 25 man trial of the Crusader, heroic. Good luck. And then Bloodfall with uh, honestly, Sophic Devotion. If you can get an item that can accept, I think, I don't even know what items don't accept the Dragonflight Enchant anymore, but the Sophic Devotion comes out to a whole lot of main stat. And speaking of Wrath of the Lich King, Death's Choice. This is Agi with an Agi proc. Main stat is probably three or four to one right now in the mage style. If you can get items that kind of purely give you main stat in some form or fashion, that's what I would recommend. And I still got the Trip Soul Prism. Double socketed hands with uh, not even really great stats. There's likely way better ones somewhere. These are from Karazhan, Maiden of Virtue. There are a lot of double socketed wastes, and you want to use an eternal belt buckle or ebon steel or living steel belt buckle. Put another socket on that. The shadow belt class. I'm a nerd and I waste money. Don't do that one. And these legs are just insane. These are from Felmist and Sunwell, so early boss, pretty easy. Primary stat socket bonus. Three sockets, two different secondary stats. For BC item, you're kind of also just mainly looking for what has two lines of secondary stats and what doesn't. Sometimes the lines of two stats will fall into the negative after or even before the Mage Tower scaling. Yikers. And then these uh, Black Temple, I honestly didn't really get any booties, which, um, yeah, the spell power is for the Boomy set. Big part about the boot is getting the Eternal Agility Enchant. That's one of the higher sources of primary stat you're going to get. Dragonflight ring. Lurking Schemer's Band. This was cheaper than any of the Shadowlands rings that they were selling. So, you know. And then I have Verse on one, Haste on the other. But it's Accord of Haste, Accord of Verse. And that gives you, I think it's 17 more stat per enchant over the Dragonflight versions. And again, not mandatory. We didn't use this for the fight just now. But over the next three days, oh boy, would I really recommend you just bring all you can. Uh, again, start with the Consumes. War Scroll of Fortitude, War Scroll of Battle Shout, Howling Rune, Boralus Blood Sausage, Greater Flask of the Currents, any Augment Runes. If you have an old chest, you can put a heavy desolate armor kit on there for 20 more stamina. And yeah, let me know how you guys are finding it. It's a toughie. And as always, guys, I want to thank you for watching. If you liked the video or learned anything, please give it a thumbs up. Help us in the algorithm. Uh, share with your friends. Subscribe if you haven't. It really helps the channel. You guys have been great. So many subscribers lately. I'm I am beside myself. I feel very appreciated. That is incredible. But we'll see you next time.